Greetings from Washington, D.C. This is Peter Thomas, General Counsel of the National Association for the Advancement of Orthotics and Prosthetics. Uh, there's been a fair amount of activity on the issue of Medicare fraud and abuse in the recent past. In fact, the House Ways and Means Health Subcommittee just recently held a hearing uh, to address the issue of Medicare fraud following the publication of a report that stated that despite the government's efforts to crack down on fraud and abuse, the Medicare program still spends about $50 billion on fraud and abuse, loses money on fraud and abuse each year. Now, of course, fraud is, is an easy concept that most people would agree, um, and certainly NAAOP agrees, has no place in the Medicare program. In fact, every dollar spent on fraud is a dollar that cannot be spent on uh, beneficiary care in the area of orthotics and prosthetics in particular. But when it comes to abuse, when it comes to overpayments, uh, there are different definitions of what those, uh, what those actually consist of. And in point of fact, many times the government takes a very strict view of uh, claims and the documentation that support those claims. And when that documentation is lacking in any way, uh, many of those claims can be considered either abusive or over uh, in the category of overpayments. Uh, that's really what's at the heart of the appeals problem with the at least the two-year wait to get an administrative law judge to hear a claim, and that's really behind many of the RAC recovery audit uh, uh, claims that are being uh, denied and then eventually many of which are being overturned in favor of providers. The NAAOP has uh, two strong positions on legislation to advance the ball and to, to, to resolve some of the many problems uh, around auditing and appeals uh, in this area. The first is support for the Medicare O&P Improvement Act. Uh, the Medicare O&P Improvement Act is legislation that's in the House of Representatives and it ultimately would link the ability to be paid by Medicare with the credentials and the qualifications of the O&P provider. Um, ultimately, it would recognize state licensure and it would ensure that only qualified providers are paid uh, to provide Medicare orthotic and prosthetic benefits. In particular, uh, it would increase the requirements for qualifications uh, and for um, quality standards on ultimately on uh, more complex orthotic and prosthetic care. This is legislation that technically should not be necessary. It was ultimately passed into federal law in 2000 in the Beneficiary Improvements and Protection Act, BIPA 2000, and CMS simply has never fully regulated and implemented that regulation, that, that law. And so we're uh, actively engaging in trying to get the Medicare O&P Improvement Act passed into law. The second piece of legislation is not yet introduced, but it is uh, a set of legislative options that would not only uh, level the playing field for le legitimate providers, but it would uh, reform some of the auditing practices of CMS administrator, uh, administrative contractors, the RAC program in particular, and would also improve and expedite the appeals process so that small businesses, but frankly any O&P uh, provider or supplier in addition to any Medicare, any Medicare provider at all, of all services, could avail itself to its rights uh, through the administrative appeals process and uh, get redress and have their case heard before an administrative law judge uh, in, on a timely basis and um, receive payment from the Medicare program in instances where providers win those cases. So uh, those two pieces of legislation, we are actively working hard. Uh, please go to www.naaop.org for more information. We thank you for listening.